As we get closer to 1700 and beyond, the amount of actual evidence we find becomes convoluted and confusing. There are so many different sources of evidence for us to piece together like a puzzle, but with as much as I could, I spend hours putting it all together and finding the hard-hitting story I am about to tell you. When Africans were first brought over as slaves in the 1600s, rules concerning miscegenation with the new immigrant population from the United Kingdom were slightly different. It was not abnormal to see a white man romantically involved with an African woman or vice versa. However, as slavery in the United States continued into the 1700s and especially after the American Revolution, slavery took a very different form and miscegenation was outlawed completely. In Maryland in the mid-1700s, laws concerning biracial relationships went from penalized to harshly shut down. However, the harsh penalties were one-sided and were relegated to black males only. White males found a hypocritically placed loophole which allowed them to take black enslaved women as concubines, a law which had remained from the time of British occupation. Enslaved women in the United Kingdom were often used as concubines, and actually, throughout history, this was a common practice. So what made it so different with American chattel slavery? People may often find comparisons to other tragedies in history, but the brutal rape and control of black enslaved women was not only about being a concubine by force, but was also a tool to control and subdue the black man. Enslaved people cannot form relationships and intimacy as they wanted without the lingering fear of the rape of a black woman hanging over their heads. And many times in Maryland, enslaved women who were chosen to be concubines were not allowed to have a relationship with anyone else. And while in many other southern states, the white mistress will look jealously towards this relationship, for some in Maryland, they actually took part in choosing a concubine for the man in order to produce a biracial or near-white offspring to be a servant to a white child or a house slave without having to spend more money purchasing a slave. Now that brings us to Rachel Hart and Yellow Harry Hart Carroll. Uh, so just before I start, just a quick note, when I was doing my research, I was supposed to trace the genealogy of only my maternal side. Since I had initially started this entire journey um, analyzing my maternal DNA, which is primarily of the mother's side, mother to mother, I wanted to trace my maternal lineage back to Africa. However, during my research, I mistakenly went on to trace the Carol slaves instead, which led me to Yellow Harry instead of Anna's grandmother, Rachel's mother, Henny. So the rest of the geolo genealogy does relate to me, being, but may not completely reflect the maternal DNA, which we'll be discussing in the next episode. But it's still interesting nonetheless and fascinating because these two slaves were very known, well known and easier to research than Henny. Yellow Harry Hart, also known as Yellow Harry Carroll, was listed in several census reports, Carol slave registries, bi biographies, and so many more documents. It seems that he was one of the most popular mulatto slaves on the Reagan plantation. He worked under Charles of Annapolis as a carpenter, where he became so known for his skills that Charles of Annapolis, also known as Charles II, gave him a shop in the city, possibly Baltimore, where he continued his work. Most of his revenue was given back to the plantation, but there were records in Carol's biography that he had been so skilled and productive that he was allowed to keep a small percentage which was used to buy food for his family. Although clearly biracial, there was no clear proof that Yellow Harry had any special privileges like that of Anna. However, it seems that his skills is what allowed him to surpass his slave status and make enough money to marry Henny and eventually be a director for other slaves with such skills. Although some records list him as Yellow Harry Hart after his mother Rachel Hart, he was also known in other records as Yellow Harry Hart Carroll. Some historians doubt whether it was actually Charles Carroll of Annapolis who fathered him, but after my own research and records from black historians, I don't have a doubt. The Carroll biography itself explained that black Carroll lineage falls under specific slave women lines of which one of them was Harry's grandmother. Additionally, it mentions that only direct descendants of Carol had his last name. And lastly, some of the census records pulled from Ancestry.com mentions Charles of Annapolis as his possible father. So there is a lot 
uh, to point towards Charles Carroll II as being his father. While there could always be doubts that the relationship with his mother makes it a little harder for me to doubt. Rachel Delaney Hart was listed actually as a possible slave of Daniel Delaney, who was a rival and business partner of Charles Carroll. She was not initially a slave of Charles Carroll, but it appears that she may have been married to a slave from the Carroll plantation, while others do believe that she was actually a slave of Carroll himself. She was known as a brown-skinned, possibly cinnamon complexion, then yet shapely woman with a quiet voice and possibly around her late teens, possibly between 16 to 18 or 19 at the time of this story and the birth of Harry. And she attracted Charles Carroll very much. In the biographies, it is stated that she often was sent away to other nearby plantations, parting her from her children and her husband due to Charles' inability to resist his attraction to her. However, black historians tell a story of brutality. She was a house slave, and Carol used to beat her, beat her brutally for even the smallest mistakes in the kitchen. He would whip, kick, and punch her as the other Carol family and business partners would look on, accepting this as punishment. Later on, she began to be brutally raped nearly every night, resulting in the birth of Yellow Harry. While it is known that she may have had many kids, I am still unsure whether Harry was her only biracial child or if she had other children, either by her own husband or by Charles Carroll of Annapolis himself. But what is known is that she had been attacked by Charles of Annapolis while being a slave under him, and she gave birth to Yellow Harry Hart Carroll, who also worked for the Charles of Annapolis plantation before his death and later Charles of Carrollton, where he would have many kids of his own, including our grandmother, Rachel Carroll, who was named after his mother, Rachel Hart. And with this, we come towards the end of my genealogical research. In the next episode, we will explore Nan, who was listed as the oldest possible relative of our Carroll family. However, after further research, she was not actually the mother of Rachel Delaney Hart, whose parents are still unknown to the historians I spoke with. We will explore some possible connections tracing us back finally to 1692 and 1700, and then finally back to Africa. Thank you so much for joining me in this amazing journey, and I'll see you in the next episode. Mm -hmm.